Pleased to be joined at the press conference now, Swiss skydiver, winner of the 145th running of the Preakness Stakes, trainer Ken McPeak and jockey Robbie Alvarado here with me now. And guys, I just have to start by saying a tremendous congratulations. First off, though, Secretariat, a minute 53. Swiss skydiver, a minute 53.28. Curlin, a minute 53.46. What do you have to say about that, Kenny? I'm really proud. I bought Curlin, too. Yep. You know? But, um, <laughs> but uh, no, it's awesome. I mean, she's just trained fantastic, and she's just a really special filly to be around. And the job Robbie did today was incredible. And Robbie, you rode Curlin to yeah. the Preakness win. The three things you just said. Secretary was the year I was born. And I got to ride Swiss Skydiver in Curlin, so there's something that has synonymous about all that. Kenny, we spoke before the race about how she's just been so durable this year. She's handled everything that's been thrown at her, second in the Kentucky Oaks. So what does it mean to step forward for the Preakness today? You know, I um, really would like a do-over in that Oaks. I thought she <laughs> could have won that day. But anyway, it, it, just incredible. Um, you know, horses tell you they're doing good. She always tells us she's doing good. Um, I know there were those naysayers. Oh, why would you do that? That's the worst thing you could do. She is just a real bull. She loves what she does every day. She likes to go to work. She, she wants to go out early because she doesn't want to wait to go out. Um, and Robbie and I have had a great week here this week. Um, you know, we basically flew up together. We had breakfast, lunch, dinner. I think, I think we were just, uh, we were rowing in the same direction and, and the mojo was good and, and it happened. And it's a big risk to run a filly in a race like the Preakness. Were there some tensions beforehand and how relieved are you now? I didn't feel that much tension, really. Um, I, f I felt like um, we had her well prepared, that things obviously, any, any, any horse race, things have to go your way. But um, every day she was happy, she was bright eyed, she was dragging me around the barn. She used to stop at every gap, and uh, thank goodness, because she was going to wear me out marching around there because her energy level. But, um, and she never misses an O's. You know, I asked Chico, did she leave anything? No, never. So um, those kind of things make it really easy for a horse trainer. You've been her hot walker this week. You've been with her through every step of it. What does she mean to you? You know, um, I've had a lot of special horses in my career, but she's definitely right there at the top right now. And I don't see, I don't see a long time until another one does something like that to me. And, um, you know, we work hard every day. And it's a game of failure is the thing about it, you know. And I've had actually a, a, a streak for Peter that I wasn't proud of. It seemed like we went six or seven years and we really didn't have the kind of horses we wanted. And then she shows up and, and maybe at a really good time, uh, you know, with all the pandemic and then Peter's health issues that he's fought through. And um, it's just a real blessing and, and uh, real special time. Owner Peter Callahan, of course, uh, wish he could join us. I know he got to see her win the Alabama, which I'm sure was special. Did you speak to him? How's he feeling? Yeah, I had a brief talk to him. Um, you know, I, I, I demanded he come down. I said, you got to come. You have to come. I mean, and I think uh, they had scheduled to come and with, with all the things going on with the uh, the, the virus, then he decided not to come. And um, you know what, we're here, and I know he's here in spirit. He wished, to, he wished he was standing here right now more than anybody in the world. Robbie, this was a last minute pickup mount for you. What does it mean to win the Preakness? Well, it, it, I, I owe it all to Kenny. I mean, uh, he believed in me still. You know. And so it's Kenny, it's all Kenny. I didn't, uh, I just, you know, people uh, start uh, thinking you don't want to do it anymore. And Kenny was there. Just when I needed someone. Kenny, you've had a long relationship with Robbie and getting a chance to see him forward your horse. He was her exercise rider this week, too. I mean, you all were out there at the barn. Uh, I was there with you, so I know. I saw it firsthand at 5 o'clock every morning. Yeah, you know, um, so, so Robbie was working horses for us at Keeneland, and I know he'd, you know, look, we all go through stages in our career where we struggle. And we all, I mean, to me, the key is better horses. And um, so he'd been out breezing horses, and Mike, Mike, my assistant, yeah, Rob, you know, had Robbie on this one, Robbie on that one. Robbie likes this one. Robbie's calling me, telling me what's going on. So he was part of the team already. And, um, you know I, know, I know that people weren't giving him the opportunities that they had previously. And um, actually, I'd like to be able to keep him more. He's going to get more opportunities again. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. But, um, but he's ridden for me in the past. He's always done a good job. Won the Alcibiades for me years back. We won a lot of graded stakes together, for that matter. And um, it's a game, you've got to have the stock. And, and you know what? You give him the stock, he gets it done. Robbie, you mentioned your relationship with Kenny. He got you on Twitter this week, too. I mean, yeah, it has yeah. to be really special. <laughs> yeah, he said, I've been on the rock, so he's, I'm going to pull you out from under the rock. It's been fun. It's been fun, man. An interesting week. Uh, obviously, I wasn't afraid of her, the crowd here or the cameras even on the wire because she had a little incident this week where she got used to the cameras. 
camera crew crossing the finish line. Bot ran over him. So she got a great, it was a great experience this week. I, mean, I had a lot of fun. I think the key was me getting on her every day. Mm-hmm. She gave me more and more confidence. And, you know, Kenny was just telling me throughout. I watched all her replays over and over again. So I had a, I had a audibles. This happened, that happened. And uh, it worked out well. And, and tell so. me about your trip. As you moved pretty early, got on the rail, and she never let Authentic go by. I had to make a conscious decision in the middle of the backside because I felt like um, uh, uh, Mr. Drury's horse, Brian's horse, was. it seemed like he was there, but then he kind of started receding at that point, and it was my chance. And I jumped in there, and uh, from the three, I knew Authentic usually stays off the fence a bit. He drifts maybe turning for home, but uh, my plan was to stay inside of him. Three's pole. It was a, it was just a, a, a sprint from Three's pole home, and she showed, she was determined to be in front of him and wasn't letting him pass. So it's just a harder goal. She had a harder goal. She really showed it all. True today. champion. Yes. She really showed it all. And Kenny has to imagine she's got to be in the talk. I mean, I know there's still some more racing, but has to be in the talk for horse a year, horse of the year after her campaign. I've only made one mistake. I didn't run her in April. <laughs> I've run her January, February, March. May, June, July, August, September, October. I mean, she's hickory. I mean, anybody that says that she hadn't entertained this country this year any more than any other horse, I mean, they weren't watching because she was doing it everywhere. She's been so fun to watch. We have some media upstairs in the press box. Press box. Any questions we can feed either jockey Robbie Alvarado or trainer Ken McPeak. Well, I can keep talking to you. Maybe the media doesn't have anything to ask yet, or maybe we'll be able to get to them. Uh, but, Robbie, going back to the start of the races, I'm sure this will be a conversation as well. Tell me where you were settled early on in the race and what the pro- thought process was at that point. Well, she left exceptionally well. She usually does in all her starts. And, and today she broke really well, and I just wanted to see who was going to go who was it. So when I was laying third right behind him, I was real comfortable in my position. And Bob's two horses in front there, and... And uh, when the uh, Guru's heart started coming back to me, I had to make a, I guess I had to make a conscious decision, either go sit there and wait on him or just go on. But I feel like she'd done it so within herself that with ease, she eased up to the champion and the champ. So I just felt like if she's going to beat him, here's her chance. And she did. I it just puts a good passenger from that point on. Huge performance from her. And it sounds like I am able to communicate upstairs now. So now we'll get some questions from the press box. All right. Still not hearing anything from upstairs. We'll see. <laughs> I'm getting a test. This is 2020 after all, right? And this is what it is. So I think this is 2020 in a nutshell. <laughs> okay. Question from the Baltimore Sun for Kenny. You had said that if there was a three-year-old Philly race around this time that you thought suited, you would have opted for that. What was the ultimate decision in putting her into the Preakness? Well, um, we had plenty of time to run against older horses, and I just felt like that the added 16th of a mile was going to be ideal for her. She's um, Her best race, I thought, for me was in the Alabama where she, she went on, and she uh, when she gets in nice rhythm, the, the distance isn't a problem. I mean, you could have run her another half mile, and she'd kept going. But um, straight three-year-olds versus going against older fillies and mares, and actually it was a tough call. Um, we looked at the numbers. If Tis the Law had run here today, I probably wouldn't have come, and I waited a long time to figure out whether he was coming or not, and, and that was one of the reasons we came. All right, thank you. Any other questions up from the press box? Question from the Blood Horse. You have the win and you're in for Breeders' Cup Classic. Where do you think we might see Swiss Guide ever next? Oh, wow. Um, you know what? That's a good question. Um, you know, we, we can look at both races, I suppose. You know, we got in for the distaff after the Alabama. But I would say right now we would probably lean towards the older fillies and mares. But, um, you know, nothing's set in stone, and we don't have to make a decision today, I don't think. Okay. Other questions upstairs? What time will you be at the barns tomorrow? 
Oh, wow. Um, you know, we've got a flight <laughs> scheduled, but I'm, we might delay it. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. We'll see. Probably seven-ish. Sleeping in tomorrow. Yeah, we did today. We gave her an easy morning. Uh, we've been no normally getting her out right at uh, first set when the track opened, but um, I'm going to guess seven. I don't know if I'm going to stay or not. I might work the phasing sale. Um, I've always got orders to buy horses, and I enjoy doing that. And I'm going to try to convince my wife to stay for another day, but we've got a daughter at home, and she's probably going to dictate what we're doing. Another question from the Baltimore Sun. When Swiss Skydiver was dueling with Authentic, did you expect her to hold on at that point? Oh, I was a little worried when they got to about the 16th pole. I thought it looked like Authentic got his head in front a little bit, and then she fought right back. Um, you know, there's no guarantees in this game, and I've been be I've had some tough beats. I was second in the Derby. I've been second in a bunch of Breeders' Cup races, third in here in the Preakness years back. But um, I'm just thrilled she fought on. Any more questions from upstairs in the press box? From the Washington Post, Robbie, same question for you. What were you feeling? What kind of heat were you feeling from Authentic in the stretch? Well, obviously, he was a derby champ, so you got to give him respect. And uh, But I felt my Philly, I, really, I was really late in the stretch before I even uncocked my stick and I uh, maybe hit her once lightly on her hand, left hand, but but she was let, all indications that she was wasn't determined to, to stay in front and not let him pass her. So uh, we had a bunch of inside jokes at the stakes barn this week. I told him how then he kept staring at her all <laughs> the time she walked by, and he got a good look at her today, though. Bet he did. Okay, and that's all from the press box. Ken McPeak, Robbie Alvarado, thank you so much, and a world of congratulations to you both on a very, very special Philly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for everybody. Questions from the press box as well.